this week. On days of our pirates, the pirates swept the Dodgers? What? They beat them two out of three when they had their homestand against them at PNC Park, and they swept them in Los Angeles? Are you kidding me? Wow, this is great by the Pirates, and this is honestly the most exciting time to be a Pirates fan in a long time. And I said if the Dodgers spend an additional $260 million, I believe they can barely push to win a series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And finally, we acquired infielder Yu Chain from the Cleveland Guardians in exchange for cash. And Cole Tucker has been released, and don't worry, he has been picked up by a team that's very close to home for him, and that's the Arizona Diamondbacks. And you see here the Pirates, at the time of this tweet, they were, had a winning record against everyone else, but they were 0-6 against the Milwaukee Brewers. So we're heading into this game, this game today where Juan C. Contreras, as a fan favorite, especially at the pitcher position, is pitching today for the Pirates after an unfortunate loss the night before in which Key Brian Hayes was able to hit a 3 uh a three-run homer being down 8-3 to three in the top of the ninth, but that was all we would get, and the Pirates would end up losing that game after some sort of optimism of maybe coming back. And right there, you see Rojas almost gets hit, but Contreras is able to get the out, and he gets it again. He strikes him out. Paven Smith walks away from the plate knowing that he has been struck by Ruansi Contreras. And this Pirates team, they're playing very great baseball right now. And the thing is, is that they're still not a spectacular team. But as the, uh, as of the time I'm recording this video, there are only 11 teams in the MLB that have a winning record. And the Pirates, they're not too far off from that. In their third place in the NL Central, they have a three-game lead over the Chicago Cubs at the time of recording this. As we see the ace pitcher take the mound, Zach Davies, for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And this one's hit high by Suwinski, one of the best rookies in the league, in my opinion. And this one's going to be caught. So that is going to end the inning, well, at least the inning for the Pirates as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Chavez is on base. And that one is hit by Rodolfo Castro, and it's going to be high up. Oh, and it drops. What an interesting series of events. So obviously, this is going to end up being an out, but it's very interesting that that ball was not caught to begin with. But it ends up working in the Diamondbacks' favor as they end up getting two outs out of the play instead of the one if he just would have caught the baseball. Chavez is not able to get to second base, and he's playing the best baseball of his career for this Pirates team. He may not be part of the youth movement that you see on this Pirates team right now, but he definitely is still a young player, and he's playing his best baseball. He's playing better now than he ever did with the Red Sox, and thank you again for giving him to us because he's really a national treasure, as this one is going to be strike called strike three, Ronsi Contreras honestly could turn into an ace pitcher i have really high hopes for this kid he's already performing very well and in my opinion is the best pitcher that this team has to offer ahead of jose quintana as we go to the bottom of the third inning and there's Yu chain the newly acquired infielder from the indians i mean excuse me the guardians as he strikes out but don't worry guys michael perez is not able to convert here and it's going to be strike three Here's Key Brian Hayes, the ace, and the man who came up clutch against the Padres about a week ago. He got a home run that gave the Pirates the lead at the top of the ninth on the road, and they held on to that lead to steal a win in San Diego as Christian Walker is at the plate. He's 0 for 1, and now he's 0 for 2. Berlancy Contreras gets the strikeout. What a game he's pitched so far. And even Zach Davies, too. I mean, really, both pitchers have pitched an amazing game. And you can tell the value of getting a run in this MLB season is much higher than the years before as hitters can't seem to hit the ball as well and you can blame that on the balls themselves on pure luck whatever you want to blame it on it is a fact the pitchers or the hitters are having a harder time this year than they have been in past years as Contreras gets the strikeout we had the top of the fifth stone no score here and he strikes him out Ruansi Contreras what a game he has pitched the in my opinion, he's going to be an ace pitcher for this team. I mean, really, he has such high potential. And look at how he's pitching right now. As so, And this one's going to be a hit. Marte, and I'm not talking about Starling Marte. I'm talking about Sterling Marte. As this one is going to end up being a double for Marte. A name, a last name that is very familiar to Pirates fans. But before we get into it, we, I just want to talk about the youth movement of this team. Because this team... They've had so many young players come up that have such great potential, and they've already started to play well. Most of this roster is in their first year, and they're finally getting called up, and the rest of them are still very young, and they're not in their first year, but they're still very really great players like Brian Reynolds and Key Brian Hayes. And yes, Brian Reynolds is going through a bit of a slump right now, but I trust that he can find a way to get out of it. 
and overall he's still coming up with home runs here and there so it's not like it's the absolute end of the world but it does suck to see him in this slump but when he picks up that production, imagine how this team's going to play then. Because, I mean, look at how they're playing now. In my opinion, they're already ahead of schedule in this rebuild with the way this team is playing right now. And let's hope they can maintain it, as this one's a very, very close call. And they're going to be reviewing it. As Chavez gets the ball here. And it doesn't look like his... It doesn't look like he has his foot on the plate before Chavez can get it. And it's going to be called safe. So something I must have not seen there. Honestly, I genuinely have no idea because I really didn't get a good view of it when I was recording this video. But nevertheless, he is called safe. As you have a new man for the Diamondbacks take to the plate. Trying to drive in the first run of the game. And he gets struck out. Ruansi Contreras showing up when it matters most. And an absolutely huge strikeout for him. As this one is going to be a wild pitch. And that's going to drive in a run. And the Diamondbacks take the 1-0 lead here in Pittsburgh. As this, if this game's won by a run, it's not even going to be an earned run. It's just going to be one off of a wild pitch. Which really does describe this game so far. Because, I mean, Contreras has pitched a great game. And other than that one pitch, I cannot complain about what this dude has done whatsoever. Ever since he even came up to the major leagues. As Contreras is going to get pulled out of the game. Gets a standing ovation from the crowd. As we see here, the highlights of Aronsi Contreras, look at all these strikeouts. Look at the way he just places that ball just fast enough and it curves just enough if he wants to throw a slider or a curveball so that it just misses the reach of the hitter, but they still feel like they can hit the ball, so he uses his bait and they try to hit it and it doesn't end up happening. As here's Underwood Jr., as this one is going to go right to the shortstop and into Michael Chavez's glove. Excuse me, that's U-Chain. Pardon me, that is U-Chain, it looks like. As that is going, we're going to go to the bottom of the eighth here. Pirates have two more chances to try to get a run, assuming that they don't give up any in the next inning as Hayes is struck out. Kennedy walks off the mound knowing that he has done his job this inning. As we go to the bottom of the ninth, the Diamondbacks have not scored. The Pirates have one more chance. Can they get this win in a very interesting fashion? You already have Reynolds on first base. The rookie, Jack Sawinski, heads up to the plate. He has fire in his eyes, and can he beat the former Pirates pitcher Mark Melanson? And it looks this one's going to be hit high. This one might be out of here. On the 3-2 pitch, and it is gone. Jack Zawinski has stolen this game from the Arizona Diamondbacks, a team who is... They're having some very positive vibes right now aside from this game in their own right based off of their record last year. But he walks it off and the Pirates, for the first time in a very long time, have a very exciting and promising roster and they seem to be performing at a very sustainable level in a way that as well. But look at here, it's, Google apparently says that the Diamondbacks already won this game, yet the Pirates had the walk-off homers. So, Google, I don't know what you were doing there, but don't get me wrong, that looks like a pretty bad mistake, and I will cherish that image forever. As we see here, Travis Swaggerty has been called up from AAA Indianapolis, and he will play the next game. Rodolfo Castro, a man who, aside from the home run against the Dodgers, to seal the deal and get the sweep, hasn't hit very well, and he definitely could use a stay back in the minor leagues and that's what he's going to do but the outfielder Travis Swaggerty came up and the Pirates took care of business in a 3-0 win the following afternoon against the Diamondbacks to take the series win as they head into a homestand against Detroit and overall this Pirates team they're playing very great baseball and it actually looks somewhat sustainable especially when you especially when you factor in the part that this Pittsburgh Pirates team is still very young and all these players have only been in the major leagues for a few weeks and look at the way they're performing look at the way this team shows up and overall I mean they they have a little bit of veteran talent too obviously you know Michael Chavez can come into play Jose Quintana but a lot of young talent and more and more people are getting called up but now we have to see Mason Martin and O'Neill Cruz especially O'Neill Cruz we all know why if you're a Pirates fan, you know why he's not being called up. It's so the Pirates can try to manipulate the system to make sure that this year doesn't count on his contract. And although that technically is not is a smart is a smart thing, I just don't think that it's ethical. And I really hope that he gets called up. But right now, honestly, it's not like we're in dire need for him. I like the way this team is right now. I hope we call up Mason Martin and O'Neill Cruz. But overall, this team, we're calling up more and more players all of which had very high hopes and they had very high draft stock invested into them. And this Pirates team, they're only four games below 500. And they're only four games out of a playoff spot. 
and we're more than 50 games into the season. Now, of course, some Pirates fans are rooting for the playoffs, and obviously I'm rooting for it too. I'm not going to sit here and say this season is a disappointment if we don't make the playoffs, but just the fact that we can even potentially be looking at that more than 50 games into the season is so refreshing as a Pirates fan. And, I mean, we have an outside shot, but at the same time, you never know. If this team catches fire like they are right now, and we get more young talent to come up and start producing, look at how we're playing now. Imagine how we're going to be three years from now. And the organization is finally making smart decisions by actually re-signing the players that are young and are producing for them on the field. And Days of Our Pirates, it's not as much of a negative thing anymore. It used to be a just complete an utter embarrassment and the amount of content I would get with this in a negative fashion was quite astronomical but at this point the Pirates are at a point where they're a mediocre baseball team and that's very exciting for the city of Pittsburgh this is something that we haven't seen since dare I say the 2012 season where all of this young talent finally started to produce and the organization wasn't doing anything to necessarily get in the way of it and the Pirates ended up becoming playoff contenders and it only lasted for a few years but I think it's going to be different once this team reaches the postseason because if we make smart organizational decisions which I don't trust the organization fully but as of recent months we have been doing so this team can stay together for a long time we might lose a few players here and there but with the amount of young talent we have and how well they're already performing if we were to lose a few players, it's not the end of the world, right? You can't re-sign everyone. So the Pirates, they're in a very great spot right now. And in the most exciting spot that they've been in, in my opinion, in at least the past six years. And just watching this team, I'm always excited to watch my team play. But just now I am, I have hope, right? Not incredible hope to the point where I think we're going to win the World Series this year. But I have hope and I have excitement. Right, I like this movement that we have going down in Pittsburgh near Heinz Field and in PNC Park. And just like the Pirates, finally, finally, finally showing actual and sustainable progress, so are the days of our Pirates.